Well, hi there. I'm here today with an Australian water dragon because we want to talk to you about these incredible pet reptiles. This is one of the most beautiful lizards in the world. I mean, they've got these cool spikes on top of their head and down their back like Godzilla. They've got a black mask, at least a lot of the localities, which, you know, makes them look like a bandit. You know, they're, they're kind of the bad boys of the water dragon world. There is actually fairly significant sexual dimorphism between them. The males get much larger and have a much bigger head. This is a female. She's quite a bit smaller, doesn't have quite all the bright red coloration. And actually, in our head-to-head -head video, between these guys and the green iguana and also in our five more of the best pet lizards you can possibly get you get a really good look at a male and he is much redder in coloration he's got that big boofy head females are considerably smaller not necessarily much shorter but just their body is much smaller and and less aggressive looking but they're all super rad totally cool lizards but are they the right pet reptile for you and that will come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability. For handleability, we give the Australian Water Dragon a score of four out of five. You can see right here, they're pretty fantastic as far as a lizard goes. Most of them are really, really good about handling, to be honest kind of like a bearded dragon, and that's one of the best handling reptiles you can possibly get. They're big, relatively, and, and robustly built, which means they're solid, it means, you know, if a kid handles them or something, they're unlikely to be able to hurt them. They also don't seem to be able to drop their tail, which is excellent. You know I always hate that when they can drop their tail, and they can't. Really, the only downside to handling an Australian water dragon is just their nails. They're, they're a semi-arboreal species, and as a result, they've got sharp claws, which can tear you up a little bit if you're not careful, especially if they're trying to climb on you and things like that. That's really the only downside. Other than that, they're just about as good to handle as a lizard could possibly be. When it comes to care, we give the Australian water dragon a score of three out of five. One of the big downsides is that they eat insects, which is nice because insect feeders are readily available. They do eat a ton of them, and that means that you're constantly going to have to have a supply of various insect feeders. Things like dubia roaches. You're definitely going to want to breed your own dubia roaches. Crickets, hornworms, superworms, and other live feeders. Basically, as big a variety of live feeders as you can provide for them, that will be best. They're going to need a very large enclosure, primarily vertically oriented, but also with enough floor space that they can have a big area to swim, because these guys do swim quite a bit, which is an awesome thing about them but it means essentially that you have to keep an aquarium inside of your dragon enclosure. So you got kind of all the pain in the neck of having a great big lizard enclosure with an aquarium in it. At the very least, if you're not gonna keep an aquarium in there, you do need a large, large water bowl that they can swim in and it's gotta be kept clean. So you're gonna need to change that out regularly. In that way, it might honestly be easier to just have a filtered water area for them. You'll need a substrate that'll help maintain that high humidity that they need. That will also help keep humidity up. You're going to need to keep that humidity up all the time. The humidity is very important for Australian water dragons. And last, when it comes to lighting, they're going to need a good basking spot, which means good UVA bulbs. But in addition to that, they need UVB. And that's always kind of a pain. You got to change those out on a regular basis. But the care is a little bit specific for Australian water dragons. That's one of the harder things about keeping them. Because you need to keep humidity up, that means screen enclosures and even enclosures with a large screen top are not gonna be the ideal way to keep them. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Australian water dragon a score of four out of five. Honestly, and we already talked about care, their enclosure is kind of specific. They, they need that big enclosure with high humidity and a large area to uh, swim, and they also need all the UVA and UVB lights, and then lots and lots and lots of various feeders. But if you provide all of this for them, they should be pretty robust for you. One of the biggest reasons that they are so robust is because, at least outside of Australia, and probably even in Australia, they're all going to be captive bred. And captive bred individuals just tend to do so much better. In fact, we've got a whole video about the perks of buying a captive bred reptile versus one that is wild caught or an import from a farm. Just 
better. They're just, the health is going to be better. They're going to adjust better to captivity. Everything is better. And Australian water dragons, like all Australian animals, actually, that are available in the pet trade, are going to be completely captive bred. And that's a wonderful thing. When it comes to availability, we give them a score of 2 out of 5. Uh, honestly, the fact that they're all captive bred here counts against them because it makes them harder to find than imports. But like we said, worth it. This does mean, however, though, that you're going to need to find a breeder. And there aren't a whole lot of people breeding them, largely because they have to compete with imports of the Chinese water dragon. You probably will not see Australian water dragon, certainly in pet shops, probably not even at expos, you're gonna need to find a breeder online. There just aren't that many of them and they're not gonna have difficulty selling the ones that they produce. They're also available somewhat seasonally. So, you know, when the eggs start to hatch, Australian water dragons will be available and then the rest of the year they won't. So if you decide you want one, you might need to wait a few months to be able to find one. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Australian water dragon a score of two out of five. The lizard itself is fairly expensive, and the prices on these seem to vary with availability and especially with demand, and it's just different from year to year, but several hundred dollars for an Australian water dragon, at least outside of Australia. The enclosure that they need is also colossal and expensive. Uh, it's probably going to need to be custom built. If you have the tools and expertise to be able to do this, you're going to be able to save a lot of money, otherwise it's going to cost you a ton to get somebody to build it for you. The lights that they need are expensive because they need not only UVA, which are moderately expensive, but UVB, which are more expensive. It's just the most expensive lighting you can need. And again, we'll have links to all these things down in the description. So if you are thinking about getting one, you should check these things out. Maybe have your whole enclosure built and ready before you even find a dragon. They need a large swimming area. We talked about this before, but it needs to be really big. And probably the easiest way to do this is just to have it filtered and heated like an aquarium, which is kind of expensive, but it's going to be a lot less work than changing out a huge water area every few days. They're also going to need branches to climb on, which can be expensive. If you pull them out of the wild, it's difficult to sanitize a really big branch, and it's tough to find types of wood that won't rot in the high humidity environment that they need. So you'll probably need to buy those, and they're expensive. For a lizard this size, it's a very expensive lizard to keep. But it's also a really cool lizard, so it might totally be worth it. And that is why, overall, the Australian Water Dragon gets a score of 3 out of 5. These are definitely not for everyone, mostly just because the care is somewhat advanced and it's, it's expensive. They're expensive to buy, expensive to keep, and, and that is not ideal. Otherwise, they're like as great of a pet as a bearded dragon. They're also difficult to find, and that's a pain. That, that's discouraging to a lot of people. But are they worth it? Yeah, probably. I mean, if you're the right person for an Australian water dragon and you're willing to pay the money and you have the expertise to set up the enclosure the way that they need it to be, they're so cool. I mean, they're almost like a bearded dragon and a monitor lizard personality all wrapped into one thing and then stuffed into the body of Godzilla. Just so cool. Such a cool looking lizard and just such an amazing animal to interact with. I definitely recommend them. If you're right for them, then they're gonna be right for you. So cool. As always, like and subscribe. And maybe if you got a chance, check out our, our Patreon. And we hope to see you real soon. That's what I said! It Everybody's like, what was weird about it? I'm no, like, I, and then you just went. It was and weird. Then, okay, just, well, everybody weird. didn't seem to do think the, it was weird. Do the hair a little. I'd come help you. Nope. <laughs> it's pretty rigid today. She's like, enough of that. Had enough of you and your shenanigans. So you wanna be behind? Velociraptor. You're a little raptor. The way we dream velociraptors mm -hmm. were. <laughs> okay. Is this okay with this position? Or does it look I think weird? It's entertaining. It looks weird, but it's funny. Yeah. Okay. How about this one? Good enough? Alright. Alright. Settle and settle down. Houdini! <laughs> what are you trying to pull? <laughs> I didn't realize the front of his head looks like a clown. I would say it's more like a Cardassian, but I'll take it. <laughs> 
uh, Can you get him to turn this way again? What do you mean? He has, his, face? his face was turned this we way. We will see. I'm not his key, his master, so. I figured. That head stayed looking exactly like he did. Handleability. Care. Availability. Uh, I don't remember. Let me see it this time. Handleability, care, hardiness, availability. Yeah, friend coughs. H C H A U. Good job starting with your pinky, though. Yeah, I'm a little coming around. <laughs> If you're not a reptile guy, you're going to know a lot more than most reptile guys do about reptiles. And especially for the fact that I have to watch the video like 50 times. A million times. Aww, yeah, that's so cute. Kind of he was closing his eyes, it was so cute. Well, that was because I was nervous. He knew that was a protective thing. Now he knows I love him. Just floppy little. So that him closing his eyes just now was not a good thing, necessarily? Well, it, it's just like if I, if I stroked your face, you'd probably close your eyes and Move your head away. But when you gus, do it, gus when doesn't you do it's a gus, that. gus. Well, but if I did it enough to you, you know, after a while, you'd, you'd, be like, oh. you'd know it wasn't a threat. It'd change. 